this morning's work, we're going to look at Creative Mind and Success, a book that was written by, by, by Ernest Holmes that gives us some great insight into just how we can get into that, that way of living our life in a, in a more certain way, in a more definite way, in a more positive way, and in a more loving way. He tells us the power of words is the most important thing we'll understand. As man's word spoken forth in the creative mind is endowed with power of expression. By our words we are justified, and by our words we are condemned. Our word has the exact amount of power that we put into it. That's why Jesus said, it's not what you put into your mouth that defiles a man, it's what comes out of his mouth. So this does, this, this, our word, our word, once again, has the exact amount of power that we put into it, and this does not mean power through effort or strain, but power through absolute conviction or faith. It is like a little messenger who knows what he is doing and knows just how to do it. We speak into our words the intelligence which we are, and backed by that greater intelligence of the universal mind, our word becomes a law unto the thing for which it is spoken. Jesus understood this far better than we do. Indeed, he absolutely believed it, for he said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away till they are all fulfilled. So this means, this makes our word inseparable from absolute intelligence and power. Now, if any word has power, it must follow that all words have power. Some words may have a greater power than others, according to our conviction, but all words have some power. How careful, then, we should be, we should be with what kind of words we are speaking. All this goes to prove that we really are one with the infinite mind, with the Spirit of God, and that our words have the power of life within them, that the word is always with us and never far off. The word is within our own mouth. Every time we speak, we are using power. We are one in mind, in spirit, with the whole universe. We are all eternally united in this one mind, this one spirit, this one life, which is God with real power. It is our own fault if we do not use this truth after we see it. We should feel, feel ourselves surrounded by this spirit, by the mind of God, this great pulsating life, this all-seeing and all-knowing reality. And when we do feel this near presence, this great power and life, then all we have to do is to speak forth into it, speak with all the positive conviction of the soul that has found its source, and above all else, never fear but that it will be done unto us even as we have believed, just as the mastermind Jesus said. What wonderful power, what a newness of life and a power of expression is waiting for those who really believe. What may the race not attain to when men wake up to the real facts of being? As yet, the race has not begun to live, but the time is drawing near. Already thousands are using this great power, and thousands are eagerly watching and waiting for the new day, for that new experience to come into play in their life expression. Always when we pray, we must believe. We always must believe. If we don't believe, we, we, really, we really shouldn't pray. We should speak our word to ourselves until we do believe. We should tell ourselves that I have faith. I have all the faith necessary to do the things that I need to do, to do the, have the things that I need to have, and to be the thing that I need to be. I have all the faith necessary, but I must tell myself that I do until I believe it. And that's the truth for me and the truth for you and the truth for everyone. So always when we pray, we must believe. Our idea of prayer is not so much asking God for things, as it is believing that we already have the things that we need. As we have said before, this already believing is necessary because all is mine, and until we have provided that full acceptance, we have not made a mold into which mind could pour itself and through which it could manifest. This positive belief is absolutely essential to real creative work, and if we do not at present have it, then we must develop it. So always we must believe, just as Jesus said. It is done unto you according to your belief, according to your belief. So 
So all is law and cause and effect, sowing and reaping, obtained through all life. Mind is cause, and what we term matter, or the whole, or the visible, is effect. So everything that we can see, hear, feel, taste, and touch is an effect of mind or spirit. Whatever spirit it is that we live in our life, whatever the spirit it is that we do anything, do we do things with the, with the idea that we're successful, that we're, we're doing the right thing at the right time, that, that whatever it is that comes to us to do, that we're capable of handling it, or do we let ourselves be intimidated by the things of the world? So all is law and cause and effect obtained through all life. Mind is cause, and what we term matter or the visible is effect. As water will freeze into the form that it is poured, so mind will solidify only into the forms that our thought takes. Thought is form. The individual provides the, so the form. He never creates or even manifests, that is, of himself. There is something that does all this for him. His sole activity is the use of this power. This power is always at hand, ready to be spoken into, and at once ready to form the words into visible expression. But the mold that, must, that most of us provide is a, is a very poor one, and we change it so quickly that it is more like a motion picture than anything else. In other words, mankind is too fickle. You know, we go from wanting this to wanting that, to changing our mind about this, to changing our mind about that, kind of like the way the politicians follow the polls. You know, they're for something one day, and the next day, because the polls say that the people want this or the people want that, they change their mind. You know, we must find in our mind a steadfast, a steadfast direction towards the good that we want and really, be find, really find within ourselves what it is that we do want. Because the law cannot work with a maybe. It cannot work with a maybe. You know, it would be like saying two times two, two equals four, maybe. Well, that's not the way it works. Two times two does equal four, and it will always equal four, and it will never be anything but four. And so we must align our mind with the intelligence and the truth of life and find in our mind what, what that intelligence is guiding us and directing us to understand and to know for ourselves. Let's go back to the mystical Ernest Holmes. It says, already we have the power. It is the gift of the Most High and its finite expression. But our ignorance of its use has caused us to create the wrong form, which in its turn has caused spirit to produce the form which we have thought into it. From this law of cause and effect, or sowing and reaping, we may never hope to escape. And while we may think of it as a hard thing at first, Yet when we understand, we shall see it as absolute justice without which there could be no real self-acting individual life at all. Because of our divine individuality, even God may have to wait our recognition of God and God's ways and God's laws. People in business will do well to remember this and so to form their thought that they will be willing to receive what they send out. No thought of discouragement or disorder should ever be created, but only positive assurance, strong thoughts of success, of divine activity, the feeling that with God all things are possible, the belief that we are one with that great mind, and these are the thoughts that make for success. The realization that we are dealing with one and not with two powers enables us to think with clearness. We are not troubled about competition or opposition or failure because there is nothing but life, and this life is continually giving to us all that we could ask for, wish for, or think into it. We can now see how essential it is that thought should be held one-pointed, that we should think always and only upon that which we want, never letting our mind dwell on anything else, and in, in this way, in this way, the Spirit works through us. The Spirit works through us. So we must keep our mind stayed on God, keep our mind directed on the good, and otherwise, otherwise, you know, just as we read in the book of James and the Holy Scripture, you know, if our faith is wavering, like the, 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 the tossing waves of the sea, then what is there to respond to? There's nothing to respond to. 
It's like going into a restaurant and sitting down and having the waiter come and say, bring me something on the menu. And the waiter's going to say, well, what something do you want on the menu? We have to make up our mind. We have to choose what our good is to be. We have to choose what it is that we want to enjoy, what we want to experience, what we ha want to have, what we want to do, and what we want to be. Everything comes back to choice. So let's go back to the mystical Ernest Holmes. He says, the ordinary individual sitting down to pray for his business unconsciously does just the thing that he should have avoided, and then he wonders why he did not get the desired result. Most people simply sit and wish for or long for something. They may even have a great desire or hope. They may even go so far as to believe that their desire is going to happen. All this is good as far as it goes, but it does not go far enough. What we must do is pr to provide that already having received attitude, that already having received attitude. This may seem hard at first, but we can easily see that it is necessary and that it is the only way that mind works, that the spirit works through us, and this is what we must do. Power is, and spirit is, and mind is, and life is, but they have to flow through us in order to express in our lives. We are dealing with a law, and nature must be obeyed before it will work for us. Just realize that this law is as natural a law as any other of God's laws, and use it with the same intelligence that you would use the law of electricity, then you will get the desired result. We provide the thought form around which the divine energies play and to which they attract the conditions necessary for the fulfillment of the thought. When we give a treatment or a prayer, this is all that we have to do. We must pray. We must treat our mind to the idea of having it. Treat our mind to the idea of enjoying it. Treat our mind to the idea of experiencing it. But before we can do even this, we have to clear our mind of all fear and of every sense of separation from God. Law is that we must enforce it or use it in our own lives. Nothing can happen to us that is not first an accepted belief in our own consciousness. We may not always be aware of what is going on within, but practice will enable us to control our thought more and more so that we shall be able to think what we want to think regardless of what may seem to be the case. Each person has within himself the capacity of knowing and making use of the law, but it must be consciously developed. This is done by practice and by a willingness to learn and to utilize whatever we know so far as we have gone. The individual who has the most power is the one who has the greatest realization of the divine presence of the presence of God and to whom this means the most as an active principle of their life. We all need more backbone and less wishbone. There is something which waits only our recognition to spring into being, bringing with it all the power in the universe, bringing with it all the power in the universe. We can just get that into our mind and believe it. It's just so we can look out into our world right now here we are in springtime, and we see all the plants coming alive, the flowers beginning to bloom, the trees getting their leaves. We know that there's an intelligence within everything that is causing this to happen. There's an intelligence within us that will cause us to grasp that new idea, become aware of that greater thought of ourselves, become aware of that greater image of ourselves, and start realizing a greater health, a greater joy, a greater prosperity, a greater success in all that we do. But we must open our mind to receive it. We must open our mind to get a sense of it. And we must open our mind to be willing to hold ourselves, hold ourselves accountable for our words and our thoughts to keep them directed towards that good that we desire to experience. That means we don't look out into our world and we don't bring forth the negative into our mind about anyone or anything, we hold fast to the idea that life is good all the time because God is present all the time and where God is, good is, and so it is. 
that that we must do that we must bring into our mind and we must remind ourselves sometimes multiple times each day because we live in a world where things are changing fast sometimes and sometimes we find ourselves even real even becoming aware of things from people that we 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 don't expect to bring us negativity and to bring us things that just shock us just like the the plane that flew into the mountain the other day in the French Alps. Who would have thought that something that, that, like that would have happened? You know, that this pilot took his life, but with his life he took a, 150 other people's lives. We don't, we don't know what life is going to bring us, but we do know this, that no matter where we are, no matter whether we're here or in the hereafter or the hereafter that, or whether we were... And the life before this, that God is always with us. Our spirit is eternal because our spirit is the image, the likeness of God. Our spirit is life. God is life. And we are part of life. And life is eternal. So we're going to use our mind to become aware of the greater things still that we are to do, that we are to be, that we are to have. And we're going to enjoy this thing called life no matter where we may be. And our, and our path to realizing the good that we desire. Let's go back to the, let's go back to the mystical Ernest Holmes. So just imagine yourself surrounded by mind, by spirit, so plastic, so receptive, that it receives the slightest impression of your thought. Whatever you think, it takes up and executes for you. Every thought is received and acted upon, not some, but all thoughts. Whatever the pattern we provide, that will be our demonstration. If we cannot get over thinking that we are poor, then we will still remain poor. As soon as we become rich in our thought, then we will be rich in our expression. There are no, these are not mere words, but the deepest truth that has ever, been, has ever come to the human race. Hundreds of thousands of the most intelligent thinkers and the most spiritual people of our day are proving this truth. We are not dealing with illusions, but with realities. Pay no more attention to the one who ridicules these ideas than you would to the blowing of the wind. In the center of your own soul, choose what you want to become, what you want to accomplish, and keep it to yourself. In the center of your own soul, Choose what you want to become, what you want to accomplish, and keep it to yourself. Every day in the silence of absolute conviction, know that it is now done. It is just as much done as far as you are concerned as it will be when you experience it in the outer, when you experience it in the material. Imagine yourself to be what you want to be. See only that which you desire. Refuse even to think about anything else and stick to it and never doubt. Say many times a day, I am that thing. Realize what this means. It means that the great universal power of the spirit is that and it cannot fail. Is that and it cannot fail. These are powerful words for all of us. We must realize this, that we, we have a power within us that's greater than anything that we're going to confront in the world or anything that may confront us. Let's go back and let's look, see, look at these final words from the mystical Ernest Holmes. Man is created, man is created an individual, and as such, he has the power of choice. Many people seem to think that man should not choose that since he has asked the spirit to lead him, he need no longer act or choose. This is taught by many teachers, but it is not consistent with our individuality. Unless we had this privilege, this power of choice, we would not be individuals. What we do need to learn is that the spirit can choose through us, but when this happens, it is an act on our own part. Even though we say, I will not choose, we are still choosing because we are choosing not to choose. We cannot escape the fact that we are made in such a way that at every step, life is a constant choice. What we do need to do is to select what we feel to be right and know that the universe will never deny us anything. 
we choose and mind creates. In other words, the spirit, the intelligence, and the power of God creates. We should endeavor to choose that which will express always a greater life. And we must remember that the spirit is always seeking to express love and beauty and livingness and givingness and forgivingness through us. If we are attuned to these and are working in harmony with the great creative power, we need have no doubt whatever, whatsoever, about its willingness to work for us through us. We must know exactly what it is that we wish to do, to be and to have, and get the perfect mental picture of what it feels like, senses like, what our senses feel like when we have it. We must believe absolutely that we now have it and never do or say anything that denies it. And so it is, amen. And so it is, amen. So once again, I want to thank you for being with me today.